the coracoacromial arch is formed by the acromion and the coracoacromial ligament. Primary intrinsic impingement is due to degeneration and tendinopathy of the rotator cuff. This leads to swelling of the uh, cuff which then impinges on the underside of the acromion of the coracoacromial arch. Primary extrinsic impingement is due to a reduction in the subacromial space and this can be caused by osochromiali, subacromial spurs, acromial fracture as well as undersurface osteophytes at the acromioclavicular joint. Bigliani described three types of acromion morphology a flat type curve type and a hooked acromion. Type 3 is associated with subacromial impingement. Treatment of subacromial impingement can be non-operative in the form of physiotherapy and subacromial steroid injections or operative often in the form of arthroscopic subacromial decompression. Where increased space is created for the tendon by removing the coracoacromial ligament from its attachment to the acromion as well as performing an acromioplasty of the anterior inferior aspect of the acromion. Secondary impingement is due to weakening of the rotator cuff and overpowering of it by the deltoid which pulls the humeral head superiorly causing impingement on abduction. It's important to preserve the coracoacromial arch when treating patients with impingement in the presence of rotator cuff tears to prevent superior migration and escape of the humeral head. The suprascapular nerve and artery pass through the suprascapular notch and the spinal glenoid notch. The suprascapular notch is covered by the superior transverse scapular ligament. The suprascapular nerve passes underneath that and the suprascapular artery passes over it, which is known as water flowing over the bridge. At the spinal glenoid notch, this is covered by the inferior transverse scapular ligament and both the suprascapular nerve and artery pass under this. The suprascapular nerve can be compressed at either site with compression at the suprascapular notch, which can be through a ganglion. Um, this causes weakness of both the supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscles. Compression at the spinal glenoid notch, which is often associated with cysts from posterior labral tears. There's weakness of the infraspinatus only.